Hello and welcome to Digital Goulash. My name is Chucky and today we're going to take Photoshop Elements and create this cool looking custom stamp. Now inside the stamp you can put a picture of one of your friends, family members, maybe one of your enemies or even one of your pets. Now I chose a picture from the Creative Commons Flickr site from Joe Buckingham and he took this great picture of a tree with some ornaments right there. So let's go ahead and get started. Now the first thing you need to do is you need to set your background palettes back to the default. That's the black and white and you do that just by hitting the D. Or you can click on this very little icon right over there and that sets your default colors back to the way they were. Now in order to switch them you can hit this little icon right here or you can click the X on your keyboard and that will swap them. The reason we're going to do that is we need white in the foreground and then we need a beige in the background. Maybe a beige, a light pink, any kind of light color that you want. So just double click on that black and pick something that's a nice light color that's going to look good against that stamp. So I'm going to pick a beige color right there and select OK. Now once we have that, now we can go ahead and create our new file. So go to File, New, and Blank File. So there we go. Now I'm going to call this one Postage Stamp. I will also have the written instructions linked to the description on the bottom. So let's go ahead and take and move our width to 1024, height 1024, resolution 96, and our background contents to background color. And then select OK, and then we have a nice beige square there. Now what we need to do is we need to go over into our layers palette. If you don't have it visible yet, you can always go over to the window right there and make sure that your layers palette is visible. And then we're going to select the little dog ear icon on the bottom. If you've watched my videos before, you know that one is create new transparent layer there, layer one. Now we're going to add a very small box right here. So click on the rectangular marquee tool right there. Go under the mode where it says fixed size and pick 64 by 64 pixels. Now go to the very corner and click on that and then you have some marching ants there. Now I'm not very good at looking at very small things like that. So I'm going to go and take my zoom tool which is right there and I'm going to zoom in on that little area right there so I can see it much better. Now what we need to do is we need to go over to file or actually go to edit and fill selection right over there and we need to fill that with the white color which is right there so go ahead and fill with white and there we go we have it now command D or control D gets rid of the marching ants because those are kind of a nuisance to look at now the next thing we need to do is we need to put a little perforation or what looks like a little perforation right there and the best way of doing that is going over to the elliptical marquee tool which is sitting under the rectangular marquee tool and choosing it. Now we need to make one that's a little bit smaller than our box so set it to the fixed size 52 by 52 pixels and go ahead and click right there. Now what you need to do is you need to move it up to the top so that it looks like it is a perforation. So go all the way to the point where the circle is cut directly in half. Once you have it there go ahead and hit the delete key. There we go. And so there is your perforation. Let's get rid of the marching ants again by going to Command or Control D. So there we have it. Now what we need to do is we need to set this as a pattern because we're going to duplicate this pattern. So go back to the rectangular marquee tool right there and go to the very corner and then just click on the very, very, now it needs to be precisely on the corner, just go ahead and click on the corner right there. Now in order to set the pattern of white, we need to turn our background layer off because we don't want this beige sitting in there. So let's go ahead and turn the eyeball off for our background layer. And as you can see, there's the checkerboard pattern, which is the transparency. So now we have this set. We need to go under edit, and then we need to define our pattern. Once we go over there, just name it perforation, and then select OK. So now that we have our pattern, we can duplicate this pattern into a longer series of perforations. And what I mean by that is, let's go ahead and hit Command D. And now that we have this pattern already set, we don't need to see that layer anymore. So we could just turn the eyeball off of that layer and then go down and select a new layer. And I'll show you why in just a second. Okay, the next thing that we need to do is we need to go over to our rectangular marquee tool and this time under fixed size, we need to select 640 pixels 
by 640 and I'll show you why in a second because we're going to fill it and make the long edge of our stamp. So go to the very corner and then just click on that corner right there and it'll fill it with a 640 pixel wide marquee. And then we're going to go over to edit and we're going to go to fill selection. Make sure that you choose under use pattern and then in the custom patterns you have a lot of them but choose the down arrow and the very last one that you saved will be right there. Select OK and you can see right there that it duplicated your pattern so now it looks like a perforation. So hit Command D to get rid of those pesky marching ants and you can see that we have a real nice looking perforation started. Now I'm going to go to Command Zero and what that does is that makes it so that I can see the whole image right there. Now I can't see this very well so I'm going to go down to my background and turn the visibility layer back on so now I can see this really well. Now there are four sides to a stamp so we need to duplicate this three more times so we'll make sure you're on layer two and hit command J three times and what that's going to do is it's going to make three copies of that. Now go over to the move tool which is right there and we're going to move these into place. So let's go ahead and drop that one down a little bit and just kind of leave it there for a second. Bring this one over here and bring this one over here. Now, if it's not moving like that, make sure that you have the auto select. This is one of the few times that I recommend that you have auto select here. Now, in order to make this straight up and down, we're going to hold the shift key down and we're going to go to one of the corners so that the curved arrow is seen and we're going to move that and it's going to go in 45 degree increments until we're able to set this up. Now what I want you to do is I want you to go over here and I want you to set this so that half of the circle is visible right there. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit so that you can see a little bit better about the way it looks. Right there is a half a circle. Now go back to the move tool again. I'm going to hold the shift key down and I'm going to go right there on the corner so that the rounded arrows are there and I'm going to move that around holding the shift key making sure it's up and down and then I'm going to go over here and I'm going to make sure that that circle is a half a circle right there. And then when I'm happy with that I can check the green check box or just hit enter. Now the last one that I need to do is I need to flip this one 180 degrees around so go ahead and make it active. Hold the shift key down one last time and then hit the circle or the rounded arrows there and then move it once again so that these are just half circles and I'll show you why. Hit enter or the green checkbox and there we have it. There is the beginning of our stamp. But and now in order to make this perforation really nice we need to do some erasing. First we need to hold down the shift key click on layer 2 copy 3 and then lay, click on layer 2 and what that's going to do is it's going to select all four of our layers right there. Right click that and go to merge layers right there. So now we have the layers merged onto a single layer. Now we have to do a little bit of erasing there so go to the eraser tool right there. Make sure that it's on the brush mode and make sure that your brush is selected as a nice hard brush right there, not a soft brush but a hard brush and then go to 52 pixels. And When you get right over here, right where that half circle is, I just want you to dot it so that it erases that one little spot right there and there we have it. And Then we're going to go to the other side and we're going to erase that spot over there then we're going to erase that spot over there and last but not least we are going to erase that spot right there. So now we have our perforation for our stamp. Okay now that we have these layers merged right there we need to have an area where the picture is going to sit. So go ahead and click on your magic wand tool right there. We now are on the layer with the perforation so click inside that perforation right there and it's going to select this square right there. Once you have that square selected, go down to the layer icon right there, the new layer icon or the dog ear, click it, and then go to Edit, 
fill with black. So let's go ahead and fill that right now. Fill that with black, and there we have it. Select OK, and that's where our picture is going to reside. Now hit Command D, and that'll get rid of the marching ants. Now, I have Joe Buckingham's picture up here, and what I want to do is once it's open, you can go ahead and click on that picture and drop it on top of that picture right there. If you need to see the entire picture, you can hit Command-0, and what that'll do is it'll fill the whole screen. Now make sure that the picture is covering the entire black spot, because I'm going to show you a real neat trick that you can do here. So I'm going to go and put it somewhere around here, making sure that the entire black area is covered. Once I have that, I'm going to go and hit Command-G right there, and what it's going to do is it's going to superimpose that picture on top of the black area. That's why we added the black area. Now, if you need to move your picture, as long as you're on this picture right here, you can use the Move tool, and you can move that around until you get something more to what you want, which is right there. Now, once you're happy with all this, we're going to go ahead and we're going to hold the Shift key down again. We're going to click on Layer 3, so we have all three of these selected right there, we're going to right click one more time and we're going to go to merge layers. So now this entire stamp is on one layer. The next thing that we need to do is we need to go up into our effects tab right here and select drop down shadows. I'm going to select this one. It doesn't really matter because you can always adjust it when you're done. I'm going to click on this and then I'm going to select apply, making sure that I'm on that particular layer right there. So go ahead and hit apply and as you can see it added a really harsh looking drop shadow right there. If I don't really like the way it looks I can go over here under the where it says FX right here on the layer, double click to FX and I could make that a little bit nicer. I could make this the size a little bit bigger, I could make the distance a little bit farther or a little bit shallower if I wanted and of course the opacity. When I'm happy with that I can go ahead and select OK. So now I have the makings of my stamp. Now on all our stamps from the post office they do say USA on them. So let's go ahead and click on the text tool right there. I have a 48 point and Chandra set as my font. So if I go ahead and click on that particular image right there and then I click on this, that will be the up and down, the text orientation right there. I can go ahead and type in U-S, well, let me go ahead and type in capital letters U-S-A, and there we have it. And when I'm happy, I can just check the green box right there. If I don't like where it's at, I can always use the Move tool and move it around to some place that I do want to have it. Now, the other thing that we have on our stamps is we have the word forever. Most of our stamps have the word forever on them. Some are 39, 41, 47, 52 cent stamps, but I'm going to go ahead and put the word forever on ours. So go ahead and click on the text tool one more time. Click on that bottom area, and I'm going to select forever as the stamp. When I'm happy with that, I'm going to click the green checkbox and use my move tool and move that over into the corner over here. And last but not least, there is usually a year with that stamp, so go ahead and click on the text tool one last time, click on there, and type in 2011. When I'm happy with that, check the green checkbox, use the move tool, and move it over into the corner. So there we have our stamp is now finished, USA Forever 2011, and it will have the nice picture of your family or your pet or your friend or whoever it is or maybe you even have a picture of a nice tree with an ornament on it. This is Chucky from Digital Goulash. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to my videos, give me a thumbs up, give me a comment down below and I'll try to answer your question as soon as possible. Cheers!